things have transitioned so smoothly because when David and Sharon sold the method and sold the business, I had it in the back of my mind that this might not go well. And there were plans I was, I was starting to make, like, you know, we had already chosen a name. We had already, I had already written out a manifesto of like what I saw differently or what I didn't really, um, I don't know if I want to say agree with, but was my my personal interpretation of something over mm-hmm. that how, how things would shift if we had to leave or if the the method kind of couldn't sustain new ownership. Mm-hmm. So I had, I started making plans for myself just as self protection. Yeah, 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 and that's um, that's re- really smart. <laughs> right, but so but. In terms of, so I I sat down with David in the cafe and he said to me, he said, oh, do you, do you regret having a yoga studio now? Mm Because, you know, at that point, I think David was really over owning the studio, Mm -hmm. was tired of running a yoga studio. Yeah. And um, I looked at him and I said, look, David, I said, I, I don't have any regrets. I said, I think that we've done amazing things in my community. You know, we brought the first vegan street fair and we've bought we've we've changed so many people's lives and we have become an anchor business in this community and um we have um we have changed you know we have upped the ante within new, the state of new jersey of what yoga should be mm-hmm. but i said there's the pro the problem with running a yoga studio now is you can't make money yeah you, that, that it's that with, between the fact that like you know, and I pointed out to the, to him that like you know when we opened the studio eight years ago, Jersey City only had two yoga studios. Hmm. By the time that the pandemic happened, there were eight yoga studios mm-hmm. in Jersey City, and seven of them were in a two block radius of where I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you have like yeah, that's tough. <laughs> Yeah, and then you have like in a, and and the pandemic has probably helped kind of clear things out a little bit. But then you had like things like Class Pass and Fit Reserve, and all of these um, student based platforms that give discounts to the student and pay the studio less. So mm-hmm. you're talking about like you know your walk in rate is is twenty dollars or a, a person. And, you know, you're, you've, you've agreed to be, you made a, hand, a business deal with this company that says, oh, we can get you a lot of students, but we're only going to play you $7 a head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're, almost, you're taking almost half, uh, under half of what mm-hmm. you would, and you kind of justify it by going, well, you know, we offer like, you know, if you buy a 50 class pack, it's like $8, so it's much, much different. But then, you know, you don't build community because mm-hmm. that person can only come one time. They may, and you know, we we justified it and did it. You know, oh, we, you know, we're pretty international here in Jersey City. We get people from the airline industry. You know, we, and in in reality, it just chips away at the ability to stay in business. Yeah, so yeah. You can't you're you're? It, it, we're not even talking about making a profit. Mm-hmm. You're not even. You're barely paying the bills. Hmm. You know, you're barely t- paying teacher salaries. You're yeah. barely paying the rent. You're barely paying the insurance. You're barely paying the taxes. Yeah. And, you know, that's the other thing here in America. You know, you have huge amount of taxes as a business owner for employees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, you know, I, I believe in what Jesus Christ said. You know, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. Render unto God that which is God. So I don't have a problem with paying taxes. <laughs> It's not a, it, because in reality, when I pay those taxes, it goes to the benefit of my employee over long term. You know, it, it goes to their Social Security. It goes mm. to, you know, so, so the idea of complaining about paying those taxes would be it would be unyogic. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, so the 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 real trouble of of owning a, a yoga studio is is that you know you have um you're you're in a business where you're um 
your cost is very high and your revenue may be very low mm -hmm. and exactly like it is in the theater. Yeah, right. Okay, right. so this is where why I don't freak out about it. So when you're in the theater, your cost is extremely high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? You have you have unions, you have people backstage, you have yeah. actors, you mm -hmm. have people in the orchestra pit, you have you know your the the rent of the theater, the electricity, the the yeah. uh, everything, concessions, da 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 da, so complicated. And that cost of doing theater is like this. Then you only have 45 people who you can sit <laughs> in the theater. Yeah. Then they have to pay. And for you to actually even break even, they have to be paying, mm -hmm. you know, a hundred and two hundred, three hundred dollars a ticket. But then you have discount tickets that lower the. And so you're in that same world that there is a limited number yeah. of spaces are people that can come into the space mm -hmm. there is a a cost of doing business and then there is the fact that the revenue can be chipped away at mm -hmm. and everybody's not paying full price so you feel like even that is also great for you that you've had that theater um experience and even that you're implementing now in running a yoga business like being looking at your well, revenue it and your keeps me from freaking out yeah exactly and running away and closing and doors and screaming, <laughs> like, this is impossible it yeah. keeps me because then because then what you have to do is you have to be very intelligent about shifting this over here and making and bringing down the cost of doing the, the, the show. Yeah. 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 The show yeah. has to, you, the budget has to be decreased and therefore, but even though the expectations are still high, you have to somehow figure out how to make this number match this number over here. But what you said also in the other podcast was so beautiful. And it's something that I was thinking about as well. You said money is Shakti, money is energy, you know, like gas in a car. Yeah. And, absolutely. and, and you feel like, is that really something that you found through your whole life? So in theater and now also running this yoga business, do you oh, see absolutely. that as, yeah. So let me, so let me, so like I go to, as a costume designer, I remember there was this one show I did. It's a it's a really good story. It was it was, it was a it was an off Broadway show about prostitutes in um, New Orleans at the turn of the century, and the 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 gentleman who took all these wonderful photos of uh, with you know when the camera just kind of was created, he took all the I can't even remember the guy's name. He was a French guy. He took all these photos of the prostitutes in New Orleans. Okay, mm. so we were doing this big, huge musical <laughs> and on a shoestring budget. And um, so, you know, I I did the budget. I written, I wrote out, like, how much each person and each character would have if we divided the budget evenly between the, all the cast members. And I it was like, it was undoable. Like you, we, we, I could not dress the people in clothing. So I took the leading lady's budget, her like, you know, $500 or whatever it was. And I went and bought a pair of shoes, a pair of pantyhose and a wig. And her budget was done. And so I walked into a meeting with the producer And I put the, the, the costume, a pair of pantyhose, a <laughs> pair of shoes, and a wig on the table. And I said, with your budget, this is your leading lady's costume. <laughs> now, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, what is it now that, now tell me how to make this work, because her money's gone. Mm. They were so furious with me, because that was the truth, you know, that was the truth about, like, that was the amount of gas you put in the car. And exactly. The car, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And the and the same thing is very true with um, with with yoga. Mm -hmm. So if if you have if you have um, you know there is the truth about you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. You know, and yoga actually um, the teachings of yoga actually uh, say this too. I'm just saying it in English. You get what you pay for. Um, 
if you go to a studio where, you know, it's a donation based class, you're probably not going to get a very good yoga class. You might get a really passionate teacher who is going to give you a phenomenal yoga class. But even if that young teacher or that, that really enthusiastic teacher um, gives you a great class once, over time, the wear and tear and the emotional distress of that teacher maybe not making any money, that teacher is going to put less and less and less and less into it. Mm -hmm. There, 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 it's just no way you can, and it's the same thing with theater. Mm -hmm. You can, you can do free theater. You can ask young actors to do a show for nothing, but over time they're going to become resentful when they don't get paid over and over and over and over again. Yeah. 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 In, in a lot of the outreach communities and within the profit community of yoga, you hear people all the time saying things like, well, yoga should be for free. <laughs> There is nothing in the yogic tradition that would support that idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you are um, thinking about the concept <laughs> of um, yoga from its roots, there is nothing within Indian culture that yoga comes out of that says something's for free. Everything is actually about your debt. Mm. Your to your parents, your debt to your ancestors, your debt to society, your debt to your teachers, your debt to God, your debt to the universe. Mm -hmm. Everything is, a, and, and in, in, in Sanatha Dharma or Hinduism, as we cleverly called it in the West, um, your life, God, and the end of, of life will be about God hallowing your debt, not your sins, but mm -hmm. what is it that you owe karmically? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we talk about the idea, the teaching of that um, yoga is free, when you look at the stories of Ram, you mm -hmm. know, this Vimitra, at the end of the teachings, Ram asked this Vimitra, what is it? Um, oh, I'm sorry, Vaishista. He <laughs> asked Vaishista, uh, what is it that I owe you for the teachings? Mm -hmm. And um, the same thing is, and, 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 and it is, it is Vaishista that says to Ram, this is the cost of my teachings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Ram doesn't get to pick what he wants to pay. <laughs> you know, and he doesn't ask for a discount. Mm -hmm. Or he doesn't say, well, you know, if I buy two, do I get one free? Mm -hmm. None of that. Um, in in the, the stories of Krishna uh, from the earlier parts of his life, Krishna's guru, he, Krishna goes to his guru, who I forget his name, uh, and he gets the teachings. And at the end of that teaching, he says to his guru, what do I owe you? And his guru, like the two different stories, his guru says to him, he says, um, in one case, he says, bring back my son who's been kidnapped by a demon. Hmm. In another version of that same story, the guru says, go ask my wife what she wants. And mm -hmm. the wife says, bring back my son from the dead. Hmm. So the, and, and the message there is, is that the teachings of yoga are actually quite high. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. asking you to raise the dead yeah because I mean, do, do you feel like that yoga because this is an interesting thing this is something that David Live who you were just mentioning our, our teacher founder of Jiva Mukti Yoga once said to me and it's something that when you said money is Shakti I was really curious to ask you this question because um, David once said to me like yoga business isn't yoga and do you feel that running a yoga business is even harder because yoga has this feeling of like, well, is it really a business? Like yoga is actually, it's a spiritual practice. And how are, you know? Why I'm, why I'm teaching those stories. So why, why, why I just gave those two stories examples. And, and unfortunately, I wish I would have had a little more time because I would have gotten the names right and things like that and been a little bit clearer. But the point of the, the stories in those two terms is to say, you know, we're dealing with a culture that created 
created yoga who believes that money and wealth is the goddess. Mm-hmm. 